it up for their closing night. Uh, it'll be John, this is adorable disasters, but first, in the editor, John and Luce will be completely scripted. I will be completely off script, off base, off color, <laughs> all the offs. <laughs> Hopefully not off in general, though. Hopefully I'll be on. Uh, but it all depends on you, folks, because you have to have an amazing suggestion. Your suggestion is good at the show. I know there's a lot of pressure on you. My job's really easy if your suggestion is good. Uh, but I'll say yes to whatever, because that's how I'm trained. So. <laughs> Uh, so here's a suggestion that I would like tonight. Uh, there are many images that inform religions that we know. Things like, uh, things like uh, people eating the body of their savior, or a giant wave destroying all of humanity except for some people who live. Well, that's more preeminent lately, too. But also it's traditional, like, uh, long ago. What is another image that you could make up from scratch that's never been used for a religion in the past? Twinkie. What about a Twinkie? <laughs> I don't know, Twinkie. But eating a Twinkie, eating a Twinkie, that is a good suggestion. <laughs> In the beginning, there was sponge cake. <laughs> and the sponge cake wound round the firmament and coalesced, and within the sponge cake came a cream filling. And this cream filling was the stuff of life. I keep Twinkies in my desk. I get hungry before lunchtime, so I have to have a little something. They're not very exciting on their own, so I've started to, you know, supplement my Twinkies. I put frosting on top. Sometimes, though I have a lot of time on my hands, which is usual every night, I take those, those little decorative things, like the little, the little red and blue and green decorative, like, raptor looking things, and I take lots of them and I stick them in the top of my Twinkies so it looks like a little multicolored porcupine. <laughs> and if it's a holiday, for example, Christmas, then I organize them in just red and white. Or if it's uh, the 4th of July, I make it red, white, and blue. <laughs> Very creative. They don't, they don't recognize all my amazing skills here, though. They, they really haven't seen what I have to offer. I mean, I try to like, parade my Twinkies out on my desk. I only eat part of them because there's a little too much sugar in them. So I put what's left of them, the second half of the Twinkie beautifully decorated, I put it on the edge of my desk. You can see how beautiful my menagerie is. <laughs> my Twinkie menagerie. I collect a little army of Twinkie things. This is a Bambi. Well, the back half of Bambi, I ate the head. <laughs> I use those little silver balls for the eyes. This is my favorite. It's just a naked Twinkie, which I started to appreciate after I over-decorated. <laughs> You know, there are some things that are just so flamboyant and, and amazing and thin and sexy and successful, and there are other things that just work the front desk. Check people in for appointments, and there's something beautiful about how plain they are. It's if God meant them to be exactly that way. Plain, undecorated, unglamorous. With hair that's kind of a little weird on one side because the flowy spritzed out. <laughs> and so the plain one has become my favorite. I take a little piece of it at the end of each day, just a little tiny spot of it, put it on my tongue, let it melt. And I imagine that that's God giving me blessings for my plainness. <laughs> I have adult braces. <laughs> Sorry, did someone say something out here? 
I've, I've, been, I've been looking for a climb all night long. Yeah. I heard a voice. Hey. Hi. Oh, you're, you're running away from me. Okay. Well, I asked if it was a rub. A rub? Yeah. What a rub? Curious. Well, it's twenty dollars for a rub. It's forty-five dollars for a full jack off. If I'm gonna blow you, it's uh, one hundred twenty-five dollars. Uh, I'm not receptive anal. If you are, then it's two hundred and fourteen dollars. Uh, that covers state taxes. I just joined the Gigolo Union recently, so the prices are set. I don't set them, buddy. I thought it was a tree. It's a building that has tree painting on the front. <laughs> Gigolos out here on the street corner weren't exciting enough, so they had the local kindergartners come out and paint the area for us as part of outreach. So they just painted the tree, but the kids did a great job. They have a really good eye. Um, and then in return, I, you know, bring them Christmas gifts. So I pay for it with my gigolo money. So, uh, yeah, thank you for recognizing the work of the kids. Uh, while you decide from my menu, uh, I want to tell you a little bit about my uh, personal history. I had to drop out of college uh, my second senior year. I was real close to the end, but not quite. I mean, that's how life happens sometimes, right? Uh, yeah, I, you know, I, I, had, I had a problem. Uh, I had a problem. My body started rejecting uh, my organs, and so I had to put my focus on my health for a while. Um, and then the school rejected me because I wasn't doing really well in school. So uh, I don't have a degree. So if you want, if you're looking for a degree, gigolo. I don't got that man. Uh, okay, so you have to keep on going. I'm sure you can find, you know, a degree gigolo on the, in Lincoln Park. <laughs> There's also a zoo there, and if that's your taste, you'll have to talk to the animals. They're not unionized, so you'll get anything for any price. But that stuff is that shit's. It's crazy. <laughs> you want me to, to suck off your gerbil, man? It's not going to happen. I got a whole union protecting me. I have, there's a union steward somewhere around here. <laughs> you cross the line, and they're going to be on you so fast, and not in the way that you're paying for. You know, there was a, a while where I went back to a tech college and tried to do a bit of a change of career. And at the end of your first semester, you have to meet with your guidance counselor. Okay, Jonathan. <laughs> I've looked over all of your capacities and your test scores. Yeah, I'm hoping that you found out that I'm qualified to be, you know, uh, kind of a president of a company. So close, but no. We found that you have the aptitude for three different things. The first thing that you have an aptitude for is playing a dead body for those movies where there's dead bodies a lot. <laughs> is that of interest to you? No, I, have, I, I don't like confined spaces and makeup makes me break out. My body rejected my organs and my skin's been sensitive ever since. What's the second one? Oh well. The second one is for the person who burns themselves on purpose. <laughs> the doctors can practice because that's really a painful thing to happen. I don't know much about that second one. <laughs> that sounds horrible, that's a job. Well, yes, yeah, some people take that job. I just don't know much about it because it's a very covenant job. It pays very well. It starts off at $17.50 an hour, which is well above minimum wage. No, I just said that my skin is sensitive. Why would I, why would I get burned if I can't wear makeup? The third one is your last choice. Well, the third one takes lots of outgoing uh, charisma. Yeah, I got that. <laughs> you have to keep yourself healthy. Yeah, I completely changed over my diet after my body started rejecting my organs, so yeah. <laughs> you have to be a people person. <sighs> totally, can't you see? I mean, I made eye contact this whole time. <laughs> well, this third one is being a gigolo. <laughs> what? No! I just, I just left the street. Ah! Oh, six months of technical co Ah! Oh, come on! God! Ah! Oh, ah! Oh, man! Ah! Oh, I trashed that office. <laughs> but I'm not very strong because.
because my organs got rejected from my body, so I really don't have a lot of gripping strength. So if you want to jack off, I'll, I'll give it to you for half price. <laughs>
But could I rub it upon a war that war would stop? Could I rub it upon a broken, bruised relationship? It would mend itself and there would be mutual trust. Could I rub it upon my sisters? They would just disappear and leave me most loved. Yeah. Simple dreaming of like, hello! <laughs> when you blow an eyebrow, you make a wish. God damn it, who moved those chairs? <laughs> Chairs. You naughty, 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 really naughty, mm -hmm. naughty, naughty old people. <laughs> <laughs> when I took control of this retirement facility, I said there were going to be four new roles. My domination, your submission, total respect for the rules, and no lunch. <laughs> All of those have been put into place, but you do not respect my rules. So I'm going to get to the bottom of this right now. You have a saucy look to you. Everyone else looks down or looks away, but you make eye contact with me. You've got to be, what, in your 70s? Yes. You're too young to be here. What did you do, give up on life? Oh, yeah. oh, and you admit it, you're just sucking off the system. <laughs> well, I'll tell you something, Margaret Shaft. The name tags were rule number 4.5. <laughs> I'm watching you now. I have cameras in this place. There are three cameras throughout this facility, and nobody knows where they are. They're on a suction cup, so I can move them. They'll never know where they're going to be. It could be under your toilet. It could be in your room. It could be where all the ladies who change the linen change, sometimes, maybe it is, I'm not saying. <laughs> could be watching you. And if I catch you stepping out of line, stealing someone else's potatoes at dinner, or, or trying to sneak out, or, or looking, out, looking, at, looking out the window when I haven't allowed it, <laughs> that's rule five, that's coming next month. <laughs> window roll. I'll know about it, Margaret Shaft and I'll move you off to hospice so fast your head will spin. <laughs> Chicken neck. <laughs> You're laughing at me now, but I know, I know what all your ailments are. I know all the medication that you're on. Oh, ah, that scares you now, doesn't it? <laughs> That's right, I allow your prescriptions to be filled. I can see revolt bubbling under the surface here, and I'm going to stamp it out faster than the cockroaches that skitter across the place where we make the meals. <laughs> Breakfast, dinner, no lunch. <laughs> You've got a fuck you look in your eyes. That's right, I use the F word. I hear you say it under your breath sometimes. What is your favorite thing about this beautiful facility? We do have some good potatoes, don't we? Do you want to know what? You want to know the secret about our potatoes? We cut them with half turnips. Oh! Oh, we pulled the wool over your eyes. Your old mealy tongues can't taste it, can they? Turnips are half the price of potatoes. We fooled you all this time. All right. You can go back to watching Wizard of Oz. <laughs> but if anyone else takes off their clothes and moves the monastery across the street, I'm going to put my camera in your room. I'm speaking to you, Mr. Tuttlebaum. <laughs> Mr. Tuttlebaum is my name. And romancing ladies is my game. <laughs> oh, you've seen Mr. Tuttlebaum today. He walked 
walked by and I was in the backyard putting up linens and he tipped his hat. Oh, Mr. Tuttlebaum has done more than that with me. Mr. Tuttlebaum came into my backyard the other day while I was lying in my pool. He slid under the water, thinking that I did not notice because I was sleeping with dark things on my eyes. He slid his hand up as though it was a leaf and let it lie on my thigh for two minutes. Oh! Tuttlebaum came into my store the other day. He thought that I was sleeping, but I was not sleeping. I had simply passed out because I was holding my breath too long. <laughs> and I do. Mr. Tuttlebaum spread me out on the counter and proceeded to give me cunnilingus. <laughs> and he was mediocre, but he can hold his breath a lot longer than I can. <laughs> Well, that is nothing. Mr. Tuttlebaum crept up my trellis last night while I truly was sleeping, slid under my covers, and then proceeded to tweak my nipples all night long while putting his thumb in my anus. <laughs> he has a tiny thumb, but it's well groomed. <laughs> well. You don't know Mr. Tuttlebaum the way I do. For I know where Mr. Tuttlebaum sleeps in the double wide trailer by the river. And I crept in there myself last night after he had returned, his thumb still smelling like your anu. <laughs> and I stripped off his clothes as he fell asleep in a stupor of exhaustion. I washed him as though he were the savior child. And while he slept, I put his head up onto my bulging and I nursed him. Not milk, mind you, but just the niceness that I could give. And though he slept, I know he was revived. So when each of you enjoy the attentions of Mr. Tuttlebaum, know that it is me, Carleen Chase Minstein Minson <laughs> O'Leary, who nurses that Tuttlebaum's energy. Don't try to figure it out. <laughs> Just know that I'm the source of all things. I'm the Grand Twinkie. <laughs> Thank you so much for electing me Grand Twinkie. I'm really excited to take on the mantle of the Grand Twinkie this year. I know that many other Grand Twinkies have led before, but I'm really going to make some changes this year. This year, Twinkie Club is going to be much more expansive. We're really going to lower the bar in terms of entry into the Twinkie Club. Now, I know that that probably sounds like it's a bad idea, but I think that when we have more membership dues coming in, then those of us at the top will really start to, to make some things happen. See, here's my plan. You've never heard of this before. We bring in a lot of other people. We charge them money, and then take that money and live high on the hog on the money they give us. There's going to be, I call them, I call them the haves and the have-nots. I know it's a totally new concept. We'll be part of the haves because we were here first. All right? And so we will reap the benefits of all of their dues money. We'll tell them that they can move up into the halves if they bring in three new people. We'll lower the bar a little bit further, and so new people can join in, and then there'll be some money that moves up into that second level, the second wave that came in, but then they'll have to give us even more money. It's like, I mean, imagine back in ancient Egypt when they were making those structures, what were they called? The, the Sphinxes. Yeah, it's a sphinxter <laughs> scheme. I call it a sphinxter scheme. Because the sphinx is very broad at the base and gets smaller and smaller as you go to the top. So we'll be at the top of the sphinx. We'll all be sphinxters. We'll use this word only among ourselves, okay? All right? So, everyone, let's go ahead and start saying our pledge of Twinkies. I'll follow you. <laughs> 
Twinkies inspectors? Twinkies inspectors. United. United. That's exactly it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very old now. At some point in my mid-40s, the pus stopped coming from out of my body. But even before then, I met a very nice man, a very kind gentleman. He has a job of playing dead people on movies. It's quite amazing. He has an amazing ability to play dead. And so he had a special respect for my pus. And then over the years, he loved me so much for who I am and what I am that the pus eventually dried up. And now I feel a little less special. But the funny thing is that all of my beautiful sisters died unhappily very young. It may have had something to do with the poison that I was giving them. <laughs> <laughs> but I had a dream the other night. I had a dream that the earth this unexplored earth was actually a foamy mass. And at the center of this mass is the stuff of life. And each of us upon birth are given an amount of the stuff of life. Some of us get lots of it. Some of us get a meager amount. And the funny thing is, still, it's not how much stuff you got. It's how you use it. An eyebrow hair. Make a wish. <laughs> <laughs> 